Yes, please. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, let's see. I just wanted to touch base on the new remote participation. Okay, public participation. Okay, so I think this is it. Seems really long for a short version, but. Um, it starts yeah. with good afternoon. <laughs> Does it? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, good. Oh, here, here we go. Good evening. Yeah, here we go. Um, this open meeting of, insert public body name, HDC is being conducted remotely pursuant of chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by the law this meeting will not feature public comment for this meeting hdc is convening by video conference via zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. For Zoom meetings, please note that the meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are, are partici participating by video conference. According, accordingly, please be aware <laughs> that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Uh, anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I, the chair, uh, me, the vice chair, uh, notes otherwise. Uh, we are now turning the first item of the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules. I, the chair, will introduce each speaker to the agenda after they conclude their remarks. Chair will go down the line to the members, inviting each by name. Please hold your, call your name. Please remember to mute your phone. Please remember to speak clearly. For any response, please contact the chair, yield the floor. If members wish to engage in a conversation, take it outside. After members have spoken, the chair will afford a public comment to those members. Finally, each vote will be taken in this meeting by roll call. So do I hear a motion to you have to you have to get us to say we're here. Okay, so um all right, roll call. Here we go. Um Diane Coombs here. Uh Carrie Thornwell here. Stephen Welsh here. Uh I guess Val and Luke are not here. Right. And, and Johnny John is here. No, I don't see him. Okay, so um, now I make a motion to approve the agenda. Okay, um, let's do roll call again to approve the agenda. That's uh, Stephen. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Diane. Aye. Myself. That passes. And what about um, not public comment, but um, on the consent. Would anybody like to say something about the consent agenda? What what would may I just ask what they would did wrong and on Backstreet? Excuse me. On no, the agenda no. to consent, does no. back um, Diane? Yep. I can tell you here. So they had added a two steps where there shouldn't have been steps. So Kathy had, you know, circled that and failed with the inspection. So the first one there is to add the two steps back. Yeah. Or to actually add the two steps. And it is also to remove the, oh, give me one second. Yeah, it, perfect. Thank you, Holly. So this is the first one here. And if we go down to where the photos are, you'll see. Okay, the other says uh, uh, relocate shower. Yes, and the outdoor shower was moved, but Kathy told me that this was okay, it actually. So if you look at the note on the bottom, it says outdoor shower, okay, referred to a different approval. So that was actually all done, said and done already. Okay, I just wanted to check it out. Thanks a lot. Yeah, sorry there. I, I should have put the description in there. My bad. That's all right. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. 
Okay, all in favor of that, Diane, on your motion. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Stephen. Aye. And myself, that passes. Consent with I conditions. I make a motion to, uh, to approve the consent with conditions, which is 10 Hinkley Lane. Okay, are you in favor of your motion? Yep. Stephen. Aye. Carrie. Aye. And myself, that passes. Okay, first new business is 10 quints. Right. Do we have him? I'm here, hello? So oh, could I just say something on. before we, we go on with this meeting? Um, could we try to do the Roberts rules where nobody else talks except who's supposed to be talking because it's di very distracting with the Zoom. Um, so please continue. Bill. Oh, sure. Um, this is <clears throat> uh, 10 quints and um, the client would like to change the existing, uh, there's a single window uh, six over six and change it into a French door. It's in the rear of the property. Um, you can see the photos that the the house, the area of the house is in the in back of the house behind Quinn Street. And it can't be seen from any traveled way, including um, Huzzy Street, which is the next street down. If I think there's more photos, is there more photos? There are not, this is it. Um, sorry, I thought I had one in there from, oh yes, the, the one with the car in it on the right-hand side, uh, That where that circle is, that's approximately where the house is, but you can't really, the only reason I knew that is because of where the, um, that large tree in the, across the street in Quint Street. So it, it can't be, this area cannot be seen. And I know it's a historic window, um, but I would have them um, preserve the window, save it uh, in the house somewhere. So they wouldn't be just taking it out and tossing it. Right, right. Okay, very good. Madam um, Chair? Yes. So um, as you all probably remember, I requested this to be taken off of the consent agenda. And the reason for that. Um, although, yes, it's not going to be visible from the publicly traveled way. This is a historic structure. Um, this is a circa 1780s uh, typical Nantucket, um, actually attributed to Barnabas Coleman. I wanted to point out for the commission that, um, and I'm going to use this as an example, my apologies to Nantucket Architecture Group, but it's imperative that even if something is going to be consentable, that we get the historic information with the application. There's oh, no okay. historic information that's been provided with the application. I did pull the HTC survey, as you can see it. So I apologize, it's hardly, you can really read it. But um, again, it is a individual, I mean, it is a, a contributing structure within the um, historic district. I do know that this property did have some additions um, or an addition back in the 90s, 1990s. And I'm gonna rotate this. And I pulled the building permit file to try to discern on where the, um, so the proposal is over here on this part, which is part of the main block of the original historic structure. This is the addition that was done back in 1990. So again, more information um, for the proposals for these historic structures, regardless if it's gonna be not visible from a public way is important. I'm glad to hear that the, um, the work will include retaining um, this window, it's here, which seems again to be on the main block of the historic um, house. Um, that was my reason for uh, pulling it off of consent and having it for you all to, to review. It is will not be visible as he, he mentioned, but um, maybe there could be a compromise because retaining um, obviously the historic fabric is something that is important with these historic structures. Um, having that window taken out and then adding a French door versus maybe just one singular door is going to be able to retain more of that historic fabric. That would be my recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Thank you so much, Holly, for bringing that to our attention and uh, to, to uh, bring in the historic facts about the um, about the house. Um, who would like to go first on this? Um, I'll go if you want. Thank you, Diane. John, okay. and John is here. Okay, thank you, John. Um, thank you. Go ahead, Diane. I, I would like to go with uh, Holly's. Uh, idea of a single door, which would make much less of an input on that wall. Uh, and the way it's hidden there in the particular garden, I think that the, having it a single door with a, with a panel at the bottom would be good. And I would also say that the window being removed would have to be saved for further use, future use. That's Thank my- you. Thank you, Diane. Um, Carrie. Um, I didn't understand Diane's comment because if they put a single door, they could leave that window um, where it is, which I think is a good option. But I also am not adverse to French doors with the kick panels just to be more appropriate because um, this is invisible. And while it is an historic structure, structures do evolve. Um, and this is minimally invasive to the structure since you're using the existing opening, enlarging it. Um, so I, I would be in favor of the French doors, but I do think the kick panel would be more appropriate on this old house. So 12 light with a kick panel. Um, and I, you know, I appreciate Bill's suggestion of keeping the window in case someday another one needs to be replaced with it. That's all. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. Um, Stephen. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Yeah, I agree with Carrie. And I would just add procedurally that I feel that if um, Holly should feel confident that she has our backing to, for instance, if this type of historic information is not included at the time of application to deem the uh, application incomplete until such a time as the appropriate information is included, so that going forward, you know, it'll make things a little more efficient, but I just want her publicly to know that I, for one, believe she has that authority and our backing. And um, if we need to add that to agenda at some point, I would suggest it. Thank you, Madam yeah. Chair. Yes, thank you. Thank you for saying that, Steve. It's really important to include that. Um, so, oh gosh, I guess it's me. Um, well, my, my first impression, I, I, I think, I wouldn't mind having the French doors with a panel, but definitely would want to use that window elsewhere. Uh, I think it's a shame that we're losing it because it's right underneath that other window and lined up. And what you have proposed isn't like centered under that window, which I think if it were, it would at least read a little more uh, balanced. Um, so those are my thoughts. Um, do I hear a motion of oh, any uh, kind? If I may, Abby? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I, I quite agree with um, either, either do, keeping the window where it is and then just having a single French door with the 12 light with a kick panel or um, to the right of that, of that door in the photograph, you can see where that trellis is in the, in the greenery growing up the side. That's actually to the to the right of that. Yes, that's actually where the stairs to the basement are. And so what I'm thinking is maybe if we take that window out of its location and put it to the right, then I would get a nice light going down into the basement mm -hmm. uh, right. to reuse that window and then keep the the, the double French door with the uh, twelve light with a kick panel. So okay. you know, if that's if that's a consideration, I would you know be welcome uh, open to doing that. I think you know, preserving the window at all costs is, is, um, is good. Um, so um, did we have a motion yet? I guess we we got stopped no. by Bill to say that. Does that change somebody's thoughts for a motion? His idea of keeping the window with the double um, with the French doors to the left. Well, I would say that if you, 
if I had white, I would say that I would approve the movie The Window to the right, but I still think a double door, there aren't any double doors that I've seen on, that I've seen on this particular building going around it on its four sides. I would still like to see it being a single uh, door with the kick panel and mm. moving the window to the right. And that would give us a door and it would give us a window. I don't. Right, right. Um, however, um, there seem to be two other, well, actually I'm, I'm a little more loose on this. I have an old house of this date and I've done the French door and we're all looking for sunlight and um, trying to keep the historic appropriateness and but still get light in um, these old houses. And so I, is there? I would, I would, I would approve. Um, I would motion to approve French doors um, aligned with the window above. So it's not off a little bit, just as Abby said, yeah. use the exact opening of the window, pop in the French doors with uh, bottom panels. So 12 light with panel and reuse that window in the stair to the right where the trellis is. Why not use the old window now? Um, that gives more. So anyways, that's my motion, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I uh, on Carrie's motion, uh, Diane. Aye. And Stephen. Aye. And I'm an aye as well, so that motion passes. Now, would that be through staff or just re or bring it back through the, uh, the meeting again? I think it would need to be through staff. I mean, it can be through staff in my mind. Yeah, I, I, I have trust in you, Bill. Um, I aye. Think Thank you. That's fine through staff. OK. Workshop. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Have a good afternoon. You too, Bill. Thank you. Andrew. Madam Chair, John is here now too. Don't forget. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Um, Hi. Hello. I will give you a brief summary of this project. This is a house um, and garage and pool and landscaping that was actually approved, I think, I don't know, maybe eight months ago. Um, and I am here with a few revisions. One is the addition of a very small cabana, which you can see clouded oh. right there on the south side of the pool. Um, and then the other portion is a revision to the existing approved garage. So if you will all recall that um, this house was approved with the condition that we would have, I don't, I don't know, Steve, if you wanna use, use the phrase of plantings in perpetuity, there was some um, phrase that was used that was the condition of this house being approved based on some of the glazing that we had there because the existing condition right now is pretty heavily vegetated around Westmore Farm and the long driveway coming across on the east side. So the cabana is a one story structure. It's all natural trim. Um, you know, we'd already gone through the conversation this house doesn't really front the street. The entrance really faces towards the north and yada yada, yada the pool was approved in the back. So I don't have much to say about the cabana structure. It's pretty straightforward. So it's somewhat of a small building. Um, with a, you know, I don't know, could even if you want to scroll down to the elevations of it. Um, Holly is actually driving today. Oh, sorry, Holly. Sorry, Holly. Um, so the, you can see the south elevation is the one that faces um, towards the road, which again will have no visibility. And the north elevation is the one that faces towards the house. Um, so I don't have much more to add. Yeah, no, that's pretty straightforward. Um, I just want to note to the um, note taker, uh, the minutes taker that John McLaughlin has arrived. Um, uh, board members, um, Carrie, what is your thoughts on Andrew's 
Well, I think it's yeah. pretty simple. Um, and I do trust that it's not visible because I know the area is pretty well planted and the pool is already approved, Andrew? Yes, it is, Carrie. So yep. this will mask it even more from old that was, Westmore was actually my thought, right, yeah. Safe. So yeah. Um, I have no problem with it. Okay, good. Um, Stephen? Oh, uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Yeah, I actually had this in front of me on consent. And I thought just that general area has been some hot potato stuff, so bring it in front of you all. Personally, um, I think it's an appropriate structure. I think regardless of whether it's screened or not, and um, if the applicant is offering um, the screening because it's necessary for the pool and the fenestration, so be it. Thank you. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. Um, Diane. I have no problem with it. Okay, good. John. John. Madam. Vice Chair, I'm no longer seeing John in our queue. Okay, um, so I'm in favor of this as well. So that, um, is there um, a motion to pass this? Make a motion to approve as, a, as submitted. Okay, and all in favor of that motion. Diane, are you in favor of your motion? Yep, yes. Steve, Stephen? Aye. And Carrie? Aye. And myself. Thank you. Okay, so the next structure is a garage that was previously approved as a one-story garage with even less visibility than anything else in the project from a public way. We are now back with making it a two-story garage, and I know what the board's comments are going to be before you say them, but there is absolutely no visibility of this structure whatsoever from anywhere, um, and we need the headroom on the second floor. So. Again, you can say it, but I, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> and, the language, and the language of it with the big window on the gable end on the south matches the house. So we're trying to integrate that, that piece into the project. Would, that which aesthetic. South picture? Okay. The south with the garage door. Um, and sorry, what, with, with the photographs, um, what were you showing us there that we, how? I'm um, just. Yeah. yeah, it's just all heavily screened. I mean, you re it's really deep. In fact, the garage previously when we submitted it was on consent through no due to no visibility. So um, I'm sure this one was flagged based on the vertical nature of the structure. Gotcha. But the massing of it is speaking to the proportions of the house that was previously approved due to no visibility. So I'm hoping the same goes for here as well. Okay, thank you. Um, Carrie, your thoughts? I like the other one so much better. <laughs> I mean, the, the visibility factor really is it. I mean, it, it's a funny proportion though. <laughs> the window, the door, the window seems larger than the door or taller, I should say. I'll, I'll hear what everyone else has to say. Mm. Steven? Yeah, uh, I'm with Carrie, uh, but you know, if it's not visible, it's not visible and um, I don't believe I sat, I may have sat on the house. You did, I don't, Steve. I, I did? You did, yes. I did. Did I vote for it? You voted for it as long as in perpetuity the planting screening was established. Oh, right, this is this is the one where the yes. concept of a visual, a visual block <laughs> bonding came up. Yes, um, this was it. This was the Yeah, start okay, so now, now I recall. Okay, yeah, Madam Chair, I, I guess I'm okay with it uh, so long as it's not visible. Okay. It, it's not that it's a horrible design. It's just with respect to the typical uh, appropriateness is really what I'm talking about. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Diane. How tall is the building? It is 26.6. Um, it should come back down to 24. Uh, and just while I'm saying it, I think that little window, you can't see any of it. So it wouldn't matter about the little window. But That's right. It should come into 24 if you can, because a garage with the apartment above is allowed to be 24. 
Can you bring that down? You know, it's um, so the the entrance to it is on the eave side. So in order to have the right headroom entering in the building, I can't I can't actually bring it down, and I don't want to wrap the stair around the backside, um, which is why the height is is where it's at. Um, I mean, I could probably shave like you know six inches, eight inches out of it, um, but two feet is two and a half feet is, is, is not really gonna be possible. Unless you did a dormer for the door. But there's no dormers on the whole project. So this is really yeah. matching the aesthetic of the house, which What's is these the, sort of tall, slender vertical elements. And what is the height of the door? Is it a normal six, eight or is it a- seven? I believe it's a seven O door. I believe it's seven O. I really don't, I just don't think you can see it. And I don't want to bury the head casing on the trim because that doesn't match the house. So, we, yeah. I mean, we actually debated about this quite a bit and we really just want to maintain the overall aesthetic on the site. Right, okay. Um, okay, so um, let's hear from Stephen. Um, I'm, I'm okay with it subject to not visible time inspection or thereafter in perpetuity. Forevermore. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, Carrie. I'll go along with it. I believe that it really isn't visible. Okay. Um, Diane, are you okay with that? Oh. Uh, I know. Oh, sure. Why not? No, I, I'm kind of with it. You're. So that's my motion, Madam Chair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, all in, it's Stephen, Stephen, thank you for that. Um, uh, all in favor of Stephen's motion. Are you in favor of your motion, Stephen? I am. And uh, Diane? Yep. And Carrie? Hi. And myself? I, I believe hey. Donna is not in attendance. I could be the fifth vote and say aye. All righty then. Madam I, Chair, yes. John so is still not in the queue. So appropriate. Okay, that passes. <laughs> um, Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Okay, hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hey there. Hi. So if we could start with uh, sheet number one, please. There we go. Oh, no, my drawing, not the uh, included survey. Yes, okay, so um, I don't have my previous review of this and so I don't know who was on this before but this uh, was before you uh, some time ago yeah. and there has been a change the site plan on the left everybody hear me okay yes yeah okay so the site plan on the left which shows 84 and 86 80 eight, 84 and 86 cliff uh, has been reconfigured to look like the lot configuration on the right. Okay, so then- uh, Robbie, can you, can you turn off that person in the background? Yeah, just a second. Just hey, turn the person off. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's a little busy here. Um, so the lots have been reconfigured The neighbors have gotten together. They've traded some parcels so that now the new lot configuration looks like the site plan on the right. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, the, there was a building existing on number 84 that was proposed to be moved to lot, uh, the number 86 lot which is depicted on the left-hand side, that was approved a couple months ago. Now, because of the reconfiguration, we would like to take that same building, rotate it 90 degrees, face it towards Pilgrim Road, as depicted on the uh, right-hand, correct, the right-hand site plan. Um, 
and add a porch, uh, some exterior stairs, a window well. Other than that, the building design is intended to stay exactly the same as was approved. So if you scroll down to the next sheet, Yep, that will show the building design modifications and the site plan sheet will show us how that fits on the site and the orientation. Um, I hope that clearly explains it. So Robbie, can I ask a question? Um, it looks on the locust that there are a few houses as close to the street as this one will be. There we go, yeah. So we're not doing anything too different compared to the few leading no. up to it from town. So that was my main concern is that it looks like it's much closer to the street. Okay. Um, but I see that there are others on the same side of the street similarly located. So I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, I think it looks like a, a good change um somehow that lot, the lot configuration helped a lot to get the driveway off cliff yeah yeah it helps a lot of things for uh, everybody here so mm -hmm. may i go next abby sorry my dog was barking go ahead diane I wanted to ask Bobby, what does the new proposal go from sideline to sideline? Uh, it just happens to be the lot configuration and the uh, the size of the existing structure. Yes. So, is there a necessity to have it right up on Cliff Road? If you moved it back, wouldn't you have a little room? We could move it back a little bit. You can see the backyard is, is fairly limited, but uh, I'd be happy to move it, you know, four or five feet if that would help. I thought it, you could just get a strip of something in between. We don't know what's going to go on the on 84, right? Well, that no proposal, you guys, uh, we've reviewed that once. And uh, I was coming in with some minor modifications for that. And then this concept of the lot line change uh, has gone forward with all the neighbors agreeing to this. Um, so that's why I am j just strictly because of, of timing and in the length of your agendas to getting back to this review. Yeah, okay. well, I think I just, four is up next week. The uh, my just thing is is most of the buildings along Cliff Road at that area have sort of more greenery around them, and I just thought if you moved even back five feet, you would get a little more space between your your lot lines. That's all. I I, 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 I no agree. I think it's a great suggestion. I'm 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 up for that. Thanks a lot. Good good. Um, Carrie, what are your thoughts? Um, well, I said my thoughts, and I think the architecture is um, the the changes in the architecture are fine as well. We lo we lost a few French doors, and they got replaced in different places, and I think they're they're all fine. I think it's appropriate. Okay, um, Stephen. Uh, yeah, thanks, Madam Chair. Yeah, I think it's appropriate. I, I'm not sure. You know, we're talking about four feet here, five feet there, whatever it is. I think I my suggestion would be that it stays within a four or five foot um, line equivalent. So if you take the uh, 82s, I think it's 82 A and B, which are to the uh, town side of this property uh, in the locus. So you're basically within a few feet. Yeah, so on the right of the bolded locus. So you're within, you know, and if, so if you look at, uh, to the right, there's two st structures, and then across the way, there's another structure. So if you're within that area, I think that's fine. Um, if you go much further back, I would think, why bother? And um, no concerns with the architecture. Thank you. Mm, oh, good. Okay. And um, to, 
Diane, you said your thing about coming off Cliff Road, Stephen, Carrie. Um, is John still not here? John's here. Oh, John. Well, are, are you on, have you been listening to this uh, 86 Cliff Road? Yes, I went and viewed it. Okay, great. What do you think? I think with the change they're making, the request for change now, that say, uh, I think the whole structure is, is appropriate in the immediate area. Anything that's on this prop, this property is somewhere in a visible area. So I think it's ready to be moved on. Oh, good, good. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank you, John. Um, so um, um, my, my concern is, is what, uh, that it uh, has the same setback as, as other houses on either side. So whatever, to make it more conforming um, and not so close to the cliff road. Um, so the, mm. those are my thoughts. Um, uh, you want a motion? Um, yes, I do. I'll give a motion to approve it as submitted for the matches the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, there's a motion. Um, uh, Carrie, are you in favor of John's motion? I am, but should we qualify it and shift it back around about four feet? I, that's what I was going to vote no because there wasn't that. Let's ask John if he's willing to do that. John, are you willing to amend your motion to shift the building away from Cliff Road four feet or so? Yes. Okay, that, that motion has been amended and um, carry on that Aye. motion. Aye. And Stephen. Aye. Uh, Diane. Aye. And John, are you in favor of your motion? Aye. Okay, the, I am too. So that passes. Thank you. Ro Robbie? Yes. Hi. Uh, it looks like you have a little garage here. That's it. That's 14 it. by 22, and it's, uh, Pretty straight it's uh, under 16 feet tall. Okay. All right. I think we get it. Um, you got I'm a little go. Okay, Diane. I, I think that's fine. Okay. Um, John, do you see the garage? Yes, I can see it. What do you I, think? I think it's fine for the neighborhood. Okay. Um, Carrie, what do you think? Um, I do too. I just have a question. Is it just intended to have grass in front of it? So it's just store a car in the winter kind of thing? Because the driveway's to the left and there's no driveway exactly. through doors? Exactly. Okay. Yep. This is good for me. Okay, interesting concept. And um, Stephen? Uh, no concerns. No concerns, okay. I make a motion to approve. Thank you, Diane, on your motion. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Uh, John. Aye. Okay, and I am an I, so an I and I, tooth for a tooth, it passes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Robbie. And one more, just a hardscape. We have the, the parking and uh, retaining wall and the bluestone, of course, but. It's, the driveway is type two, forget this, brick, brick, common area, brick, bluestone. Okay. This looks quite straightforward too. Um, would anybody like to go first? I will. Okay, John. I think it's as you just said, it's appropriate and it's, and it's natural for the neighborhood. You want a motion to approve it? I'll make yeah. it. John, um, 
I'd like to hold that motion until everybody talks and then I'll come back and maybe we can make that motion. Uh, Carrie? I just have a question about the brick. Is there brick on Pilgrim Road? Pilgrim Road is a dirt road, isn't it? It yes. is a dirt road. Is this at a slope or something and you need to have structure to it? I'm just wondering why not gravel? Uh, I, I at least like to get the uh, the apron in some sort of a hard stone or or, or gravel. I don't, uh, I guess I could ask the client, we could always come back, but. It, I it, just know from living on Dukes that aprons on dirt roads absolutely stink. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they just don't work. You Abby, they, they, are, re, they have to be rebuilt every few years. They just, they just get, really gets, don't work. Hey, you know, if you guys are open to gravel there, then let's go for it. Um, okay, let's hear from everybody. Uh, Stephen, your thoughts? Yeah, um, I, Robbie, can you give us a kind of break down what's going on with the grade change here. It looks like it's, I'm okay. not sure what's so happening. The, the, the grade slopes a bit, okay? That, um, and we need to try to level that backyard. Um, the neighbor, so you can see their garage is just to the south of our uh, lot line, okay? So their yeah. existing driveway is going to shift a little bit and we need to uh, start to level that. Uh, the height of the retaining wall is two feet plus or minus, so it's it's fairly minor, um, and it's just an attempt to level our backyard a little bit. We are developing and working on the lot to the left, number <coughs> four. So uh, because this is this is going to work for everybody in that corner. Um, everybody's working together to try to level that out a little bit as best we can. Okay, so I anticipate that backyard to come to grade uh, between 17 and 15, so an average around 16. So we got about a two foot grade change there that we're trying to uh, uh, level out a little bit. So that's the reason for the uh, retaining. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm looking at the topography map online and it looks like there's a little bit of an anomaly where it's 14 feet deep and it's it's kind of a hole right in that area. Okay, thank you. I have no other uh, questions, Madam Chair. I think this is totally appropriate. Okay, thanks, Stephen. Uh, Diane. Yeah, my only question is I don't believe that we approve uh, aprons on a dirt road for the reason that they meld down. So if you have gravel that, uh, and it's dirt at that end of Pilgrim Road, I think you gotta check out the apron thing, that's all. Madam Chair, if I can answer that, um, aprons are not required on dirt roads. If, this, if Pilgrim Road was paved, then absolutely. Well, Maybe you want to hold on to this, <clears throat> or um, you could always do uh, grass and dirt. Um, what do you want to do with this, Robbie? Gravel. Gravel. Okay. Stone and okay. stone. Yeah. P like pea stone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm so make that motion. All right, Diane. Thank you. Um, on Diane's motion to change the brick to P stone, um, Carrie. Aye. Stephen. A gravelly eye. <laughs> gravelly eye. And Diane, on your eye. And John. Aye. Aye. Yeah, aye as well. Thank, thanks, Robbie. Right. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Okay. What well, are you doing, Mr. Topham? How are you? This is Cam. Um, this is a simple little 
uh, move. So it's a single story structure and we want to move it 25 feet back further into the property and rotate it slightly. That's it. It's, so it's an existing house? You've already approved the structure. Um, so it's just relocating it further back in the lot. It helps out the existing septic system uh, pitch. I see. And, and the building in front, this, the other, the building in front of it, is that a? That's an existing dwelling. Same, same party, same. Same family. family. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That seems pretty straightforward. Um, anybody want to? Was motion to approve as submitted. Uh, John, we have to wait for everybody to talk first. It's a democracy here. Okay, um, I'm I, nice. thank, I thank you for that motion, but let's hear from uh, Carrie. I have no problem with this. Stephen? No concerns. Uh, Diane? I have no problem. And, and I don't either. John, can you make your motion? Yes, I made it to approve okay. it as submitted. Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor of John's motion, um, Diane? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Carrie? Aye. And myself, and, and John's in favor of his own motion. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Madam Chair, I do believe this applicant is here. I'm not certain if she would like to speak Hi. up. Oh. Hi, all. I'm here. Sorry, I think I was muted. Hi there. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I am here to talk with you today about uh, 31 Washington Pond Road. Uh, once we get that up on the screen. Um, we will be right with you, with you, Elizabeth. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Could we put the yeah. John, we will be right with you. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty on our end. Uh, my question is. Oh, I go get confused, as you know. That the uh, 31 Washington Road. Uh, could you put it up on the screen, please? He's trying. Thank you. All right. Great. Um, so this is uh, on th yeah, 31 Washington Pond Road, uh, backing right up to Washington Pond. Uh, and today we're talking to you uh, about the garage structure, which you can see sort of circled in red. Yeah, thank you. That's the that's the general location. Um, this is an existing garage structure that is accessible off of Old Harbor Road. Um, and uh, what we're looking to do is to add two dormers uh, to this property. Um, you can see you can see the front of it off of Old Harbor Road in these photographs here. Um, and then the back of it, uh, obviously, the road turns away and you can't, uh, you can't see it from the road. Um, so uh, if you want to scroll down to the next set of photos. Perfect. Um, so the existing house, you can see we have a picture in the front um, and then around the back of the pool. The existing house does have some shed dormers, uh, flush shed dormers um, on the house. So we've picked up that language. The client would like to add um, two dormers, one to the front uh, over the garage doors and then one off the back. Um, and so we're using that same sort of language. You can see the pictures of the, of the garage here as well as the existing um, window types and what that looks like. Um, there's also a picture here on the uh, bottom right of the existing pool equipment that takes up about a third to a half of the back of the garage, which we're hoping to screen um, under a porch. And so if you wanna scroll on down to the, um, to the elevations, which are on the last page, I believe. There we go. 
Um, so on the north elevation, you can see uh, the dormer that would be visible from the road there. Um, and we have windows centered over the, the uh, garage doors. Um, and then you can see on the south elevation uh, that additional dormer there um, with the porch that we're trying to add along with some screening uh, so that the pool equipment will be uh, accessible, but obviously be hidden uh, from view because it's a bit unsightly. Um, and that's what we'd like to do on this on this property. Mm, thanks, Elizabeth. Looks good. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, John, would you like to comment? Don't make a motion. Just would you like to make a comment uh, on the garage? I'd like to speak on it. Yes, that's what I'm asking. I think I can see that this will change is that the deck where the stairs are, they should be closer. It's more than eight feet off the wall, the deck, second deck. So it's going to go back to eight feet right there. Yes. The standard is eight foot. So thank you. Thank you, John. Um, Carrie? Um, yeah, I think the front elevation being visible, it's overwhelming that dormer and the sort of awkward alignment of the windows in the dormer. I understand they're trying to align over the doors, but it's not, I think that dormer needs to be set back and the windows have to be much smaller, maybe half the size of those windows, um, which will get that dormer set back from the face of the um, wall from the, you know, the main wall below. Mm -hmm. And I agree with John. I think the stairs on the outside of that second floor deck should be tucked inside to the eight foot max. Um, Cause that also seems a little overwhelming, but my main concern is that front elevation. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. Uh, Steven. Yeah. Um, so that is actually eight feet deep on the deck. Uh, if you preview the plans, um, I, I'm my only concern is with respect to the north elevation, the window sizing. Um, I think that it is um, well, first of all, I'd like to say it's very similar to the massing of the a garage uh, about 30 or 40 feet from the road at nine washing pond. Um, I do think that the window size on the north elevation Primarily, the heights are a little bit of a concern. I don't mind the fact that they're off-centered, but they do center on the door axes below. Um, it's, you know, I, I don't think they all need to be the same. So I'm okay with it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, I see. Okay, and um, Diane. Diane, Miss Coombs. She's muted. Uh, there. Uh, how tall is this building? Elizabeth? Uh, this is an, ex sorry, this is an existing structure and it is 24 foot seven. All right. Well, I think that the dormers have overpowered the, if it's still going as a garage, it has overpowered the garage. I would have put not melt mold windows if you're going to go for the uh, dormer over the, the two garage doors and I would reduce the size of the dormer so you don't have that overhang that hangs out to the left. It's unnecessary and it should come in. There shouldn't be that much room and unmold the windows, either spread three out across the whole front or something, but that that is, the dormer is, I think, is way out of, of proportion. Uh, and on the back, whatever it is, the south elevation, I think also this is a, a garage and it should be, this is what you are applying for. I, I why is the, First floor along that south elevation, all wood. Why? What's there? Oh, so that, um, sorry, that is where that pool equipment was that there was a, we had a photograph of uh, that's I saw taking the pool up in, 
It's yep. going to take up so the that's the yep. So that's sort of taking up a portion of the back of that. So we'd like to cover that up uh, so yep. that it's so that it's a. I agree. I just didn't know that it would take up the whole thing. And I think to, again, reduce the size of the dormer up, up above, it makes the second floor of the garage top heavy over what's down below. And if you're going to call it a, you know, a guest house, then call it a guest house. If you're going to stick with a garage, then let's try and keep that. I I agree with what has been said about reducing the porch, bringing the, the stairs in, but I would like to see those dormers reduced at reduced in fenestration. Thank you. Hmm, thanks, yeah, Diane. Yeah, yeah, person. Uh, Diane, did, I mean, sorry, John, did you want to say something? Yes, I, I missed one thing and I should have caught it. Yes, I'd like to make a comment on the South elevation, where the meeting rails do not meet anywhere close to being in line where they should be. So I was thinking if you, if you took the Dharma, the top of the Dharma and moved it up to the top of the peak, and the, the meeting rails will go up a little bit and hold into that deck where, where they're supposed to be instead of Right now, they're, 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 there's no meeting rail there. They should be. They should raise yeah. that roof right to the peak. That was right. comment. Well, Thank you. OK, thanks, John. I think in this design, it's, it's hard to make meeting rails meet to the middle of the roof line. But um, it looks like we're holding for revisions. Um, you want that motion? Uh, I'd like to add to the motion if we're going to make one. Yeah, okay. sir, Steve, go ahead. Uh, so motion to hold for revisions. I'd like to request to the applicant that they bring in some images of um, similar or or if not similar in the area structures. Um, I think that'll be beneficial for our review. Mm -hmm. I do too. Um, so could, could maybe, uh, did John make a motion or did- uh, that, that was the motion. Oh, that's the motion. Okay, thank you, Stephen. On your motion, um, aye, aye, John, for holding for for, for revisions, yes, for revisions, yes. Uh, see, uh, Carrie, aye, and Diane, aye, aye. Okay, we're all in favor of that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Chip. Good Webinar. evening or afternoon, I guess. Can you hear me? Uh, I can. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, this is uh, Chip Webster on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is an application for uh, 34 Easton. There's an existing uh, one story brick structure there. We have photographs of it. And this is an application for a move uh, slash demo of that existing structure. Uh, why don't we look at, if we don't mind, maybe we'll, I'll walk through the photos with you. Um, starting in the upper left, this is, uh, as it says, it's a view from across the street. So that's looking right at the property uh, from across Easton Street. Uh, the next one is uh, from the edge of the street, the northeast corner. Uh, then we have the uh, center of the lot. These other photographs, so that's what you see from Easton Street, are those top three photographs. Uh, these other ones, uh, the three in the middle and the two on the lower uh, left are standing in the middle of the property, sort of looking at various parts of the structure. Um, and then last but not least, we have the view from the water. So this is a... Uh, it's a brick, one-story structure. It was built in 1965. Okay. There's one on top of the dresser. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Polly, please. Go. So I do have both staff and HSAB comments. Um, I do want to thank Chip for having the date on here. 
However, there is no HDC survey in the application. Um, there is an HDC survey on file. Uh, this is a, um, you know, obviously at the time of the survey, it was not deemed contributing, but it actually is. I do have some information that was provided from the Nantucket Preservation Trust. Um, this house was previously the Coach House Motel operated by John Simpson. Simpson constructed a 100-foot pier uh, um, in the mid-1960s and allowed excursion boats from Hyannis to tie up to the pier. These were large vessels, including the 60-foot Sea King. This led to a series of complaints that were lodged with the selectmen from residents of Brant Point and the Brant Point Association, as Simpson was allowing commercial vessels to use his pier. By 1967, this property was acquired by Walter Beinecke Jr. Uh, note all the restrictions in the deed. Um, she, I also received a whole bunch of uh, deeds uh, that NPT provided, um, some pertaining to the pier. Uh, Beinecke bought the mot motel, allowing the control of what was going on with the pier. And of course, this was all before zoning um, on, on the island. Uh, of this motel, in 1966, it was noted, it, it's too bad we don't have zoning to prevent it. So of course, this, this has some significance within the history of that time frame on Nantucket. Uh, let's see, um, Beinecke Sherburn Associates sold it to the Island Service Company in 1967, who sold it to the Johnson family in 1972, who are the current owners. When it sold to the Johnson family, an additional restriction was added to the property that it must be a, a one family residence. Um, of course, that would be something that would have to be looked into. I don't know, I haven't looked hard closely at that restriction if that's something that's looking forward. Um, but I did want to also notate in that there was information provided that um, back in 2008, I guess the HDC did have a um, review of a demolition and it was included in some INM news. Of course, that's been long time frame, and that COA is long, null, and void. Um, however, that was. It's also important to note that that was way before um, our update to our National Historic Landmark nomination that was done in 2012. Um, included structures up into this time per period and up into some of them since 1975. So I just wanted to bring that um, information to the record, and then. HSAB's comments on the demolition as proposed. No survey or historical information has been provided. Uh, former owners include important island figures such as Walter Beinecke and sculptor Seward Johnson giving this home historic relevance. It's a unique example of postmodern architecture representing this period on Nantucket. Would prefer to see this home renovated rather than demolished. And I would concur on those comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm, thank you, Holly. Um, yeah, it's it's it definitely has its own own flavor um yeah hey, I, so, I would like to go uh, uh diane are you ready yep. i'm yes, ready I'm walking oh, hold on john one sec go okay. ahead diane i think this is a building that needs to be left where it is it sets in the land and over since 1965, it has grown and it fits in well, even though it's only a one story building. I think it would be a shame to move it. I don't think it will move well on the property. And so I would be against the demo or the move. I think, look at what you got. And if you drive down there, look at the trees, every one of them like the house down on Union Street would have to be cut down front and back. Is this really fit into the to the streetscape which we are deemed have to follow? Would this fit into the streetscape of Eastern Street? I don't think so. I, I think that that's important to keep us a street of in our old historic district or almost in the new old historic district to make it stay looking like the rest of the street and the way it has. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Diane. Um, John, did you want to go next? If you want, yes, I'd like to. Yes, thank you. Um, visually, this structure 
has no historical aspects to the immediate surroundings or anything else on Eastern Street. It's an oddity. And how, how it ever got approved, I would never know, but I must have been here. Um, I would say that uh, they would, to dem demolish it would be would be a blessing. It, is, it has nothing to do with the old historic districts areas. So I, th I think it should be moved on, find out what you're going to put there. Thank you. OK, thanks, John. Um, Carrie. I tend to agree with John. Um, this is kind of an, ano an anomaly down there. Um, I think the, old, the one of the reasons why anyone would want to keep it is because it's so tucked in and invisible and you know non-consequential. But um, the historic value, I don't know. It looks like a Florida motel to me, and I don't see it having anything to do with Nantucket architecture. I'm not sure. Um, obviously the owner is significant or the previous owner is significant, but I don't think that precedes not being able to remove a building. Um, also just in the fact that a couple of buildings down the way at the other end of the point have been allowed to be demolished or moved or something, I don't, I, I think this one fits in with those approvals. Um, so that's all. Uh, thank you, Carrie. Steven. Thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, I would tend to agree with John and Carrie. I think, you know, clearly it is our more modern history dating back to 1965, and there is um, historic references to character. But, um, I would like to see if this is a structure that due to its nature, it seems <clears throat> kind of uniquely qualified, excuse me, to be partitioned up and moved off and uh, perhaps reused uh, as bungalows uh, for our affordable housing initiative. Uh, you know, looking at the structure, I'm somewhat familiar with it, just having been down in the area quite a bit, uh, both on the land and the water side and looking at it from plan view. So I think it could be put to good use and create some new history. Uh, and, um, you know, unfortunately those street trees would go, but it looks like there's some, you know, basically some overgrown Russian olives and some pines. Um, having said that, I, I, if I were to sit on the replacement structure would want to be sensitive to uh, somehow replicating at least or echoing the the sense of character and setting that exists here because it is kind of nice to have a soft green breakup of these uh, larger structures that are almost bare uh, in comparison. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, um, Stephen. And uh, so I, I personally am with Diane on this. I was opposed to the one down the street being knocked down. Um, now we're working on putting it back. But I appreciate the, uh, the history with Beinecke and you know, where it came from, part of our, it is part of our Nantucket history, although the 50s, it, I think it has relevance. Um, and it's definitely an appropriate size and who knows what we're going to get. I mean, you know what we're going to get. So I would be opposed to this, um, but uh, I, I would like, to have somebody make a motion. I will make one. Okay. I will make a motion to approve the application as submitted. It has no historical architectural features other than glass instead of plastic on windows. It, it ought to be demolished. Thank you. Um, now, on that motion, because we do actually do have history on this, as Holly just read to us, um, would you would you add that to your motion that we would want to um, keep keep the history, the the drawings, the the uh, written history uh, somehow kept. Um, in case this motion gets passed. Um, would you add that to your motion, John? Uh, yeah, I'll make a comment first. 
I, I, did, I voted against it when it came in. Anyway, let you know my, my, where I was standing in 1965. Yes, I, I'm, I'm in favor of the motion. To, to add uh, the history. Okay, thank you. Um, Carrie. Aye. Stephen. Uh, I, I'm in favor of the motion if we retract the portion that says it ought to be demolished, because that's not what I'm voting for. Well, then um, I think well. that this, it, excuse me, I think that this structure has historic significant value that are, are significance that should somehow be uh, documented. I think that that should be in the record. There should be, if I were to make this motion, it would be that there would be clean elevations that um, there would be interior photo documentation. And, um, you know, this isn't a dilapidated structure that's falling down and hasn't been maintained. Um, so I think that I would suggest that, um, I, I know, look, I'm voting no on the motion if the motion is gonna stand as it is, because I think it's, it's inappropriately worded. Well, let's Ma Madam, Ch Madam Chair, could I offer a comment? Oh yes, please. Yeah, uh, two things. Uh, first, I want to uh, reinforce that every single project that we have that is a move demo, we always reach out to Housing Nantucket and the other affordable housing groups uh, to see if it's suitable for them so that we will absolutely be looking for a, uh, hopefully a, a new home. Uh, secondly, we are, would be delighted to uh, uh, do existing drawings and photographs of the entire building, interior and exterior, for uh, uh, records of the structure. So I just want to offer both of those uh, items. Thank you, Chip. And Chip, can I go? Yes. Hold on, John. Uh, one person at a time, and I really mean that. Uh, I, I, I can't do both. Um, Diane, what briefly? I try to make it briefly, Abby, but, but you talk about the rules you got you got chip speaking john speaking we have a motion on the table and we should finish that up before we open it up to everything else i am a nay okay um so the motion as it stands from john um could we go through the roll call again on john's motion um stephen I'm a no. Carrie. I'm changing mine to a no because I prefer Steve's thoughts. Uh, Diane. No. And I'm a no as well. Um, so I'd that, like to make a motion. That, okay, um, ho hold on one more second. I just wanna make sure, um, it, it, do we have enough information to, to, to make this, um, Madam Chair. Well, we'll go, go, go yeah, ahead. I, I'd like to make a motion, Madam Chair. Um, the motion is that uh, to approve subject to the following conditions. Um, to clarify, this is a move off demo as opposed to demolition. To uh, request that the applicant, the, um, applicant will reach out to affordable housing advocates to see if they would like to, this is in addition to the demolition uh, bylaw to see if they have any interest, uh, that the elevations will be documented with CAD drawings and photographs. And um, to the extent there's anything of interest on the interior architecturally um, with respect to the era that it would be photo documented also uh, for the file. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. That sounds very um, concrete and extensive. I think it covers all those things that you wanted to say. Um, I so, think Holly wanted to speak. Madam Chairperson. But no, no, we, so just hold on, John, Holly. Okay. No Thank problem. you, Madam Chair. Quickly, I, I just wanted to, I know you have a, a motion on the floor. I just wanted to mention that this is where cultural history outweighs the architectural significance. And I just wanna make that for the record. Thank you. Right. Thank, thank you for, for that, Holly. Um, so um, on Stephen's motion, um, Carrie. Aye. Um, John. 
Madam Chairperson, you already have two motions on the floor. My motion. Yeah. We are and motion to not pass. Second. John, your motion did not pass. We have a new motion from Stephen that includes okay. the history. All right, I accept that. Thank you. And uh, Diane. Nay. And I'm a no, um, but that does pass. Um, so that motion passes. Did John uh, vote for that motion? Yes. Voted in favor. Madam Chair. Uh, okay. Thank you. For this next application at 26 Eel Point, Chip could also speak to it, but it is being withdrawn as it was previously approved and is a little misleading as is. So it was withdrawn, they will be reapplying. So um, Chip, if you wanna say anything else you can, but uh, we can go ahead and skip number 10, which is 26 Eel Point Road. Uh, yes, that's, that's correct. But uh, being said, so we, we uh, it's, it's a renewal of our previous approval and it wasn't clear in our initial application. So we're pulling it and resubmitting it uh, with that, making that more clear with the copies of the original uh, approval. So we're, we're, we're skipping it for today. Okay, we're not opening it. So let's go on to Don't the even next one. Open. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to ask uh, if uh, uh, if it's okay if the uh, Anne Kutzpa, who is the uh, representative from Housing Nine Target, could say a few words first. Sure. Hello, everyone. Anne Kutzpa from Housing Nine Target. I'm the executive director. Um, thank you for hearing this next series of applications, we are really excited to be able to um, install, we're hoping, um, solar panels on six of our affordable rental properties. So right now you're going to be hearing um, one about 46 Orkawa. The whole idea is we're trying to help the low and moderate income residents who are their year round residents who are renting from us to be able to um, have access to clean energy, number one, and then also stabilize and um, be, help them plan and budget for their energy costs, which can be pretty exorbitant. So um, that's what we're here to talk about. And this house, you approved a move on of this structure, and we're actually going to be moving it on next week. So thank you for that. It's a house recycling opportunity. And now we'd like to put some solar panels on the south facing roof here, which is we positioned the building so that it could um, take advantage of the most, you know, the most amount of sun all through the day. Um, so I'm interested to hear what you think about it. I don't know. Um, hold on, John. Uh, um... Yeah, let me, uh, I'll, I'll finish the, uh, the, the presentation yes, on this property. So uh, as Anne said, this building is being moved onto the property. It was previously approved as a move off, move on. Um, it's a, as you can see, it's a, a effectively a one and a half story building. The panels will be on the rear of the building. And as you can see there, they're gonna be placed on a low pitch dormer. And due to the extensive screening, uh, these are not going to be visible from Okawa Ave, as you can see there from the screening onto the right of that driveway there. It's very tall, dense screening. Thank you, Tim. Um, it, in, and so you're saying that from Oko, Oko what is that? Oh, Orkawa. Orkawa. Um, well, you would not see it from, from that avenue? Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, all right, who would like to go first? I will. Com comments only, John. I'm Thank sorry. You. What, what are your comments? My comments are that number one, the uh, 
you, you said this is something that's going to hit Nantucket in a couple of years bad, but it's nice to have them outside the old historic districts area. That's all, not inside. Thank you, John. Um, uh, that's one comment. My other comment is that this, this group, yeah, my second comment is the one of the photo of the uh, application, and it's got the, uh, what do you call it? Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. It's, uh, it's, it, it is visible from a travel way, but as I say, I have no objection to it because there's going to, a lot of this is coming in the near future, and we better be ready for this outside the old historic area. And as it is presented here, I would not be opposed to it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, John. Um, Stephen. Uh, thanks, thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, so a couple things. Uh, one, I just, for, I think it's important to clarify for the record. We get these little speeches on stuff. Um, the, our federal designation is as a national historic landmark. The federal government in the state, the federal government does not recognize the old historic district per se, or the Sconset historic district per se. Um, now that doesn't affect my thoughts on this application. However, I think it's clear, it should be clear to all of us and to the general public that the whole island is the historic district. Um, on this particular application, I believe that this meets all of our guidelines with one exception. Uh, that except, you know, it's on the rear of the structure. Um, it's on the um, <clears throat> on the dormer, which is a shallow plane, which isn't one of our uh, strict guidelines. However, it is a uh, a method of mitigating the visual impact. Um, and then, um, as importantly, as uh, Tim pointed out, there is dense vegetation. So although uh, the one point that it misses is it's not a black colored roof, um, but um, I think that those, the mitigating factors overcome that. And uh, those are my comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Carrie. Um, I agree with Stephen. I think every property has its own sort of set of circumstances that we should take into account. Um, this is on the rear of the building, so it's facing Okerwa. It should be invisible. Um, and I guess if those pine trees die, they're going to need to plant some to help it be invisible from Okerwa. Um, but yeah, I think this, I'm okay with this one. Great, great. Thanks, Carrie. Um, did, did Diane go? Diane? No. no, I'm sitting here waiting. Thank you. I, in the location, I think it's far enough back from Okawa um, that you can't make it out. I, I do think it's important to follow our, the rules that uh, Steve is certainly part of setting up that it isn't visible from different places. And uh, we have to keep that in mind no matter who is applying because the next guy doesn't know what that guy is. So if you got one, I want one. But if this cannot be seen and they do some planting that is not be hard for the renters to keep up, then I would approve it. Right, right. Good, good, good thoughts, Diane. Thank you. And um, uh, so John's in favor. Yeah, I, I think we have to be careful with the second generation of people buying these houses to keep up with this perpetuity that we keep talking about. I don't know how that's going to manifest itself, but. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Stephen. If, if I may, I believe that this is actually an NHA property, so it's not going to be sold. But uh, Anne is shaking her head. Maybe she'd want to comment. Yeah, it's a um, a rental property, one of our own properties. So it will be a rental in perpetuity. This unit, we will also be applying for the subsidized housing inventory for this one. So this is going to help us with our safe harbor from unfriendly 40 Bs. And, uh, and then we take that energy cost and incorporate it into the rent so that the tenants will always have affordable rent. But there are permanent deed restrictions on this 
property that will maintain it in perpetuity in our ownership or if we were to dissolve then it would be another affordable housing entity that would own it and rent it very good Anna. I, I was actually talking in general about all the things that we've been saying are in perpetuity other other applications sorry so i'm in favor of this as well um do i hear a motion to approve motion, motion to approve is submitted oh great stephen thank you um on that motion john for the motion to approve it yes yes i'm in favor diane yes Steve, uh carrie Aye. And Stephen and myself, aye. Aye. That passes. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Um, so do we have, uh, where uh, are we at? Madam Chair, um, we can approve minutes on Tuesday. John did just make a motion, um, but if you wanted to, you know, withdraw that and approve minutes, that's fine. It's up to you guys. Um, I'm just looking to see what we have <laughs> a, ahead of, of uh, after Oparwa uh, is uh, rooftop solar. Um, what, what's the feeling of the, does anybody want to take one more or do we have time constraints? I don't want to take up anybody's time. I'm I'm got four or five left in me if we're sticking on the same topic. The all of these solar you want to? Yeah. All right. Um, want to knock them off? It, Carrie, you okay? Yeah, I can stay. Okay. Um, Diane, are you yep. are you good for another? Uh, and uh, John, are you okay to take on a few more before we adjourn? Uh, yes, I'm in favor of my motion to adjourn. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I yes. yeah. Right. I don't think that's going to pass. We're, we're just going to go ahead with a couple more. Um, so let's go. Okay. John, will you retract your motion, please? Sorry. Sorry, Madam Chair. John, can you take back your motion to adjourn, please? What I, what I, what I say it again, please. I can't hear. Could you retract your motion to adjourn? We want, we just want to do a couple more. Fine. Thank you. Okay, Love go it. ahead, Tim. Thank you, everyone. Um, okay, so this next property, four and a quarter. Um, this is a single story building. The panels are going to be placed on the rear of the building. And the rear roof elevation is not visible from North Quarter Drive, and therefore the panels will not be visible either. I have no problem with this. Motion to approve. Sorry, John, can you hold on to those motions till everybody on the board talks, please? Because then we have to backtrack. Um, Carrie, you said you were in favor? Yep. Yep. Um, Diane? I would say I, as long as it follows our guidelines. Uh, Stephen? Uh, I'm an I, it meets our guidelines. It, so, our, could, so this is on the back of the house, it's not on right on that road. Yep. Yeah, and the back of the house faces the back of the lot. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm in favor of that too then. Um, John, you can make a motion. Yes, to approve. Okay, good. Um, on John's motion, uh, Stephen. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Diane. Aye. And myself, that motion passes. Thank you. And I vote in favor. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, what's next? So this next property is um, one Monahanset Street. Uh, this property, I, I think you see Adam Street in Pocomo. That's an old site plan. And those are actually, I think, old paper roads that don't actually exist. Um, you can see the, that triangle there is actually the property. 
and the, the blue rectangle is actually the driveway coming to the property off of Monahansett Street. So the property is well, well, well set back at the end of a long driveway. The sonar panels are going to be placed on the rear elevation and neither the house or any of the panels are going to be visible from Monahansett Street. Motion to approve. God. Uh, hold, hold that motion. Thank you oh, no, so is. much, John. Okay, let's hear from everybody. Well, what what is your while you're on, John? Are you in favor? Oh, definitely. Okay, Diane. I am in favor also. And Stephen. Yeah, it meets our guidelines. And and uh, Carrie. Yeah, me too. Excellent. Okay, uh, that that uh, John, your your motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Keep going. Keep going. Let's get through these act housing ones at least. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So um, this is one, this next one I believe is one Norwood Street. The property is located in Tom Nevers. It also is a single story structure. Uh, the panels are going to be placed on the south slash west side of the house and not on the front of the house. And the panels uh, will not, due to screening, the panels will not be visible from Norwood Street. Tim, can you, okay, so these are the pictures. These are the pictures looking, uh, you can see the little yellow arrows that where I took the pictures from, okay. where we took the pictures from. Um, and so you can see that um, there's very heavy vegetation along Norwood Street. And even when you look down the driveway, you're not going to be able to see that southwest elevation. What about where that red car is on the bottom? The red car. Um, is that Oh, is that is that a driveway? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that would technically not be a public way. I, I can't say for sure. Looking at the vegetation on that satellite picture, I would say no. But given that it's a single story structure, but I believe that's a driveway. I'd like to go, Madam Chair. Yes. Oh, please, Stephen, go. Uh, I was out there this morning uh, at Two Norwood. Uh, this is highly dense area. The only visibility is obliquely from the driveway as I think I saw in one of the images. And um, aside from the vegetation, it meets our guidelines. Thank you. Excellent, thank you for that information. Um, Carrie. Yeah, I think if anything's visible, it will be in the winter and it would be minimal. So I'm okay with this as well. Oh, good, okay. And Diane? Yep, that's all, it would be nice. And I'm not sure whether the roof is black, but that was one of our uh, requests. So just keep that in mind. But otherwise, I have no problem with it. Motion. And John? John? Motion to approve. OK, all in favor of John's motion. Uh, Carrie? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Diane? Aye. And John and I are in favor of his motion. Thank you. Yes. That's it. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we have that... one more, one more from Housing Nantucket. One more, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is the last one, John. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is sixty-six Pochick Ave. This is a single-story structure that is set back approximately 120 feet from Pochick Ave. The panels are going to be on the front of the property. However, due to extensive screening on Pochick Ave and along the property driveway, only a very slim partial view will be available from the head of the driveway. From all other, uh, all other locations, the view will be completely blocked. They were all so easy until this one. Yeah, I'm <laughs> gonna let this, I'm gonna let this one breathe if somebody else wants to jump in. 
I'll, I'll go. On the front. Go ahead, Diane. It doesn't fit our, our rules and regulations is on the front of the building and it's visible. Poaching is not all that heavily uh, vegetated in areas and you've got st streets on, on three sides of it. P public, they may be ways, but they're still public ways. So I have a problem with it being on the front of the building. We have right. it there, so there you go. Yeah, I, yeah, uh, Stephen. Yeah, um, this one is a tougher for me given the comments Diane's made. And I do think that there's visibility, but um, I think what I would like to ask is that we put this one on a view. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I would just like to comment with respect to the layout, uh, I think if it's some way possible to make the presentation of the panels more uniform, I understand that what we're looking at is a vertical rendition of what will be panels on an angle. So they're not gonna look exactly like this. Uh, there will be a orthographic uh, view as opposed to this kind of straight on elevation of the panels. But the broken first tier, um, I think might, if, it's, if it can't be overcome with a solid rectangle would be better served to be on the upper portion of the roof where the light on the edges blends back into the sky because it 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 creates an architectural element out of the solar roof panels as it's laid out to my mind. So I just want to comment on that while we have an opportunity. Um, I think I'm clear. If I'm not, flip it over if you can't make it a rectangle. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, Carrie. Yeah, I agree. I think this is, I mean, it goes against everything we are doing. Um, and some of them have a little bit that goes against, but majority is uh, conforming. Um, I just wonder if this property is big enough to do a ground array. Thank you. Thank you, um, Carrie. You John. You got enough room. Madam Chairperson. Yes. This uh, 66 posted deck is being held for a viewing. Am I correct? Uh, I, I, it seems to be going that way. Well, then, then there's a motion for a whole or viewing. Okay. Um, all in favor of John's motion, Carrie. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Diane. Aye. And, and I myself am in favor of a view. Um, thank you, John. And that passes. And Madam I, Chair. Yes. Sorry. Uh, did you want this to come back on Tuesday? Sure. I would be open to that, Madam Chair. Okay. All yeah. right. I'll have it. Uh, I'll have it for Tuesday's agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Kadeem. All right. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I guess we're yes. not going to do the minutes. Motion to adjourn. Uh, in favor of John's motion, Carrie. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Diane. Aye. And myself, I'm in favor of John's motion. Thank you. See you. See you Thank Tuesday. Have a good weekend, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, -bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye.